Hey everybody. So, as perfectionism is another word of not getting anything done because you're really af just afraid, I thought to start getting favored by the algorithmic gods of YouTube and finally start pumping more of my thoughts into video form and perhaps in the in the hopes that it will be useful to uh, people um, uh, and other artists as well as as collectors and the whole emerging crypto art space and because uh, I, uh, I come from a filmmaking background and back in the day it was the, the, the more perfect and thought out uh, you know the movies of M. Night Shyamalan or David Fincher or Ridley Scott those who created those masterful worlds that had every particular detail right about them uh, as well as the spirit of of creation were the true inspiration of why i became a filmmaker and an artist to begin with so we now live in a very different kind of era and uh, i suppose it's an increasingly frustrating thing to me that i i feel that there's a lot that i can contribute uh, with tweets alone you get easily quite uh, misunderstood, uh, especially if you critique something because it doesn't necessarily show that you're coming from a place of love as opposed to uh, just being a negative person. And because the crypto art space means the world to me, I really think I owe myself and the, and the space to uh, the, the sort of real depth of things, of what it is that I'm trying to share with things. And... and uh, help help everything come along and one of the things that i i think i'm most misunderstood uh with in the, in this space is for example when i went to film school and this is in newcastle uh from 2000 and 2003 what i thought was so weird was that none of the departments were talking to one another we were emerging filmmakers uh, needing to talk to props and music and makeup artists and actors and everything. And this course had been running uh, at Northumbria University for God knows how long. And it was meant to be the, the bee's knees up north. Uh, there were only two film schools where you could shoot on film, one in London and, and this one in Newcastle. So that's why I even chose Newcastle because I thought I was going to party less, which turned out to be not the <laughs> smartest smartest of uh, of decisions, but regardless, w what was so strange is that the course hadn't arranged any communication between the departments. Uh, so I kind of took it upon myself to start going to the actors and designers and contemporary artists in order to uh, try and infuse things together. And I held this whole passionate speech about that thing and uh, kind of was met by a weird amount of resistance and uh it, it was so radically left wing er everything that that was going on in the university at the time already because everything like you quickly infused from in between the lines that uh what you're meant to be doing is is bringing about this non-commercial utopia as in that the um, the, the the coursework that gave got the biggest points was literally putting products in a shopping cart setting it on fire and throwing it from out the uh, out the shopping mall uh, roof and uh, you know any, anything other my, my goal was to go towards Hollywood a-list Hollywood and and create these worlds and I kind of innately understood that being commercial was a part of that and if you only get a hatred towards um, marketing or or helping people get to know what it is that you've done you're, you're probably sawing your own foot off in the process and making films that can be something up to 800 people 1200 people that you're responsible for uh, as a producer or a director in a certain kind of sense and, and those millions and millions of dollars you need to be on your not only your a game but you need to be respond fiscally responsible for the for the amount of uh, trust that is placed upon you. So I found it very strange of what the atmosphere was and I, I didn't come from university with a, I, I mean it opened up worlds and conceptual realms and I was challenged to think about things in in a certain way but only later when I graduated did I understand how limited a part of that was uh, in a certain kind of sense. And this leads me to uh, going 
into the art world uh, 12 years ago and finding myself quite, um, I mean, as an entrepreneurial spirit and someone who wants to construct things and really help things along and truly uh, want to have this even naive desire to leave the world a little bit of a better place than uh, it was before I arrived here after I exit and whether the checks and balances are going <laughs> to, who knows. But that's at least the intent and the the ever escalating deconstruction movement of of the art world the postmodern and deconstructionist um, mindset is something that we now see uh, as an as an avalanche in the world you, you know what started at from evergreen Clo uh, evergreen college just a while ago and, and it's now hit the streets in a certain kind of sense and th there's a variety of people who help uh, sort of see this from another perspective like the intellectual dark web you have your eric weinsteins and and jordan petersons and those who are very very demonized for for sort of counterbalancing a little bit of something that is is uh i suppose coming from the wall street angle uh, to begin with is this kleptocratic system and now an escalation of of a certain kind of um, thing and I'm not, I'm not going to go deeper into that because those of you who know, who know this uh, already know this so uh, but regardless um, for example uh, in 2018 I went to Miami to headline a crypto art show and uh, it, it was uh, something of a pressure because th there was quite a lot of monetary um, things that didn't happen before that needed to happen when I first flew to Washington and uh, the, there was some uh, things that didn't go exactly to plan, nothing to do with what I was doing, but ex exactly those who were meant to handle things didn't handle things. So it was a lot of pressure. And then I got sponsored $5,000 in order to go and get this spot to uh, to headline this conference. And they, it was meant to be, again, the bee's knees of things and all of the investors are going to be there and uh, who are the who's who of crypto who might be interested in art and seeing it as an investment pro uh, possibility. So what I quickly saw is that after people are coming out of the, the conference uh, and, and, and emerging into the restaurant space or whatever it was, there was the, the same phenomena as in what was happening in, the, in my university is that the investors were sitting in one table and the artists were sitting in another and who, uh, everyone was in these compartments that were completely counterproductive uh, to the actual purpose of what was going on there. So I very politely said hello to the artists and I got to know Johnny Dollar from that. Uh, that and, 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 uh, but I, I recognize that this is not where I'm meant to be. I'm not meant to be talking to in an echo chamber to artists about what is mostly their frustrations and some th often to do with money. I'm meant to be going and bravely talking to, to the investors. And I think this is, in a certain sense, led to one of the mm, things that, like I said, I'm mostly misunderstood, but it was also a strategic error on my part, because when I saw the, uh, the movement of the very radical left-wing uh, collectivist point of view, when I tried to get stuff done in the, in the leg legacy art world and how much of a running in mud that was, when I saw the same thing uh, as an... Um, thought meme emerging from the very first beginnings of the crypto art scene that everyone wants to was meant to be buddy buddy and and uh you know pump each other up and all that kind of stuff i, I preempted that this is probably going to end up in a disaster because uh, artists often are kind of like startups but without funding so the the very nice ideas and and the sort of um uh the spirit of things can uh, when someone starts to do well and some not so much and whatever they can really get into a lot of drama and as as it did there, there was quite a lot of drama in the begin the first days and especially during the last year but it actually ended up being as a collective spirit much much more healthier than i thought it was and the emerging hierarchy of people helping each other out and sort of leveling um, leveling where we are, that's where the emerging collectors also start to see who is who and, and, and try and discover things. And I was trying to directly talk to the collectors and investors and companies because I thought this is the way to avoid drama. But actually, what I didn't realize is that me talking directly to the investors was seen as an elitist 
even arrogant point of view by the fellow artists, even though I was trying to be um, polite and very sort of prop up the ones that I thought were interesting and write about them on NewsBTC and, and be a part of it. But my main goal was to really break these bubbles and help art infuse a, in a meaningful and useful way into this movement. And of course, everything that has happened right now, even because uh, for me, crypto art to begin with is something that in terms of themes and ideas helps the movement uh, grow. And of course, the medium is the message in terms of NFTs. But now if you put absolutely ridiculous things that are probably the, the equivalent of a duct taped banana on, on the wall, like you saw at Art Basel, that is just simply to anyone with a half a brain, a marketing ploy by the gallery who's paid someone to pay that money or what, however it went. It's, you know, uh, taking those worst bits of the legacy art world and bringing them into the crypto art space is, I, I tried to critique in a healthy way because we really have an opportunity to create something that is of a renaissance to the whole of the art world and, and start to counterbalance this deconstructionist movement that is going on to a constructionist one. So to me, at least, what crypto art is at its best is in some sort of a purposeful, communicative, tangible way contributing towards the, the whole of the ecosystem in terms of, of course, utilizing the technology, but also in thought. And that would be the whole package of crypto art. Now, you could also, of course, say that it's just that you make some art pieces and you put it on the chain and then that makes it crypto art. And, and sure, but um, I think that's not enough in a certain sense to call yourself a crypto artist because that has nothing to do with the actual origins of why this movement came to be and what this whole uh, space is about. And again, this is something that takes me back quite a bit because in 2006, when I started sharing uh, on Facebook already things about the monetary system or how it functions, and that was a complete tinfoil hat thing to do at the time, uh, it makes a lot more sense to people now. Uh, I, I produced a documentary film with my own funds with, a, with this sort of a collective uh, thing uh, that brought about what the whole monetary system was and what the potential solutions were that I didn't understand just how many of those things had been tried before already and I, I, I was highly passionately ideologically driven and not really sometimes knowing what I was talking about which I'm fairly embarrassed by sometimes but that's the growth process I, suppo I suppose um, but having seen many of those ideological positions and groups and, and, and communities already collapse into their own um, impossibility. That's what I was wary of, and that's what I was trying to counter going directly to the investors. And to a relative degree, it really did work, especially with my physical art pieces. That's been a successful way of going about it. But the completely new NFT market is not something that uh, either understood it or embraced it or then... Um, you know, it's not really my place to even try and understand um, what, what's going on there. But it's kind of clear that um, some things I could have done better or communicated better. So uh, I'm starting to do these videos in order to at least tell my authentic point of view and, uh, and say why potentially it's not only good to go and ask other artists about uh, who is who or what is what because that that's a very limited point of view as to what will be the next thing and where value is and uh, this is the competitive side of me is that I make no qualms about saying that uh, this thing that I've built over 12 years of being a professional artist and the, the quite frankly suffering and turmoil that I had to go through in order to make it possible to have 350 digital high resolution originals is something that is very very valuable to me to my family and the whole movement and my whole journey from around 2006 of with this monetary evolution and being a part of it uh, and uh, i also think I, I did too too well in in masking that what i was doing was digital art because my aesthetics come from 
the Renaissance, as you can see from this piece behind me, and you know this kind of Sistine Chapel type of spiritual and economical and evolutionary, and and all of those are are kind of infused into this whole thing. So uh, I I didn't personally like the depthless thing that uh, is almost like computer game sort of demos that is now uh, or it has some motion or some glossy 3d light thing on it and a cube that turns and i'm just going like okay i i don't know what the relevance is but people seem to like it but the real innovation that i did 12 years ago truly was to first start body painting on people and photographing them and painting and photographing those those paintings and nature photography and all sorts of things and infusing that together with Photoshop so that the majority of even my contemporaries or uh, sometimes even my collectors think that it all originates from an oil painting. So it, it's, it, but in fact, it's most of the time something like uh, 200 up to 2000 layers of digitized material that is put together as an infused whole and uh, it's not really um, fast food it's more like slow food so for the for the soul in a certain kind of sense and I'm, I'm definitely more getting t into uh, getting for them to move and and discovering the the collaborators that I can do that with because it's so easily done because they're already in layers and and digitized um, but regardless uh, I hope that brings a little bit of insight uh, more into why it is that I've made certain certain decisions and, and very likely from a certain point of view uh, mistakes in the journey uh, in, in how I've communicated or how I thought things were going to go in a certain kind of sense. But, um, but I'm sure there might be a couple of artists who also realize that if you just make your art pieces and then you post it on Twitter and you tag a bunch of other artists who fought years and years to make their reputations and get their collector bases and you try and prop up the system by trying to make your own marketing riding on the backs of those who've made uh, some sex success you've hit some walls and maybe it's just a wall of silence and and disapproval and you might be disappointed it's a, oh this movement was meant to be just to support me and everything but those of us who with a with a few battle scars um, under our belts already and and some disappointments and seeing how things escalate from innocent things into um, full-blown dramas is it might give you a perspective of how to just balance how you're gonna go about not a, not only approaching marketing um, but how you go about building your relationships and who with you're going to do it in order to be as effective as possible, should that be your goal. But for for the majority of the people that I know, j just how difficult it is to make a living as an artist, um, that it's wise. It's wise to um, not think of things like my university taught me and my fellow um, uh, emerging filmmakers like 20 years ago to think because you know there's very few of them that are filmmakers today I think just one tops two so and that was a class of I think 35 people who were selected from a bunch of 1200 people so that's not a very good ratio uh, of uh, hopes and dreams and, and visions of a future becoming a reality. I think that's an actual disaster and in some sense I actually wish I could sue my university for the damage that they've done. Uh, but I fought through it. Um, yeah, so my critique for the space uh, comes from a love of it, uh, definitely, and an appreciation and gratitude of how slow things were in the legacy art world how quick they are in the crypto space but my dream of what it is that i'm trying to get to is to have a part of the core right import the best parts of the legacy art system uh, that is thousands and thousands of years of tradition of how and why art is valued and what what the whole thing is has been about for such a long time and then infusing it with this new exciting technology and the investment excuse me, pro possibilities and what the technology allows us to do now all over the world and, and escape cubicles and uh, just stupid jobs that you have to do in order to make ends meet and to take time away from your creativity and the actual contribution you can give to the world. Um, so 
that's my perspective and if you made it through here and uh, um, thanks for watching and I'll just be dropping these more and more and trying to make them without you know right now my mind is going like oh I should take videos from the Miami conference and put them in there and and all of, illustrate this whole video and make it perfect and whatever no fuck that I don't have time for it I'm do two commissions and, and work, <laughs> working on that stuff and hopefully these will be uh, useful and the YouTube algorithm gods are going to be more favorable to me and please share this if you think uh, it was useful and follow me on YouTube um, my Twitter is at art by Vesa and check out for new drops talk to you later